In this case study, the AP100 Advanced Process Controller is being used to control the temperature of fluid within a tank with its internal PID controller. The AP100 device reads the fluid temperature from an RTD temperature probe that outputs a 0 to 5 volt signal for 0 to 200 degrees Celsius respectively. The AP100 shall control the fluid temperature by manipulating two control valves. One control valve is on the hot fluid inlet line, the other is on the cold fluid inlet line into the tank. Both control valves receive a 4 to 20 milliamp signal for 0% to 100% open. The 0% to 100% range of the output of the PID controller is split in two between the two control valves. If the PID controller output is between 0% and 48%, the cold fluid valve is operated. This valve is fully open when the controller's output is between 0% and fully closed when the controller output is 48%. If the controller output is between 52% and 100%, the hot fluid valve will be operated. At 52% controller output, the hot fluid valve starts to open, and it is fully open at 100% controller output. There is a dead band between 48% and 52% of controller output, where both valves remain closed. This dead band is to pre prevent seat wear out from the controller constantly switching between the two valves. The AP100 device reads the temperature of the fluid within the tank from an RTD temperature probe that outputs a 0 to 5 volt signal for 0 degrees to 200 degrees Celsius respectively. This voltage signal is read into the AP100 device through the analog input channel 3. The first step is to configure the analog input channel 3 to read this signal. To navigate to the analog channel 3 setup screen, press the settings icon from the main menu, then press input channel setup, then channel 3 setup. Change the voltage range to 0 to 5 volts, then press the corresponding change button on the channel descriptor text field. Press backspace to delete the default channel text. Then enter in the desired channel descriptor text. Press the OK button to accept the changes, then navigate back to the main menu. Now that the analog input channel 3 has been successfully set up, the next step is to assign this channel to the PID controller. Assigning signals is done using equations. To navigate to the equation summary page, press the expressions icon on the main menu, then press equation setup. Press the corresponding edit button for equation 1. Edit the result for equation 1, then select PID1 input signal. Press the edit equation button, then select the variable button. Here you can select analog input 3. Press OK to save. To enable equation 1, press the enable radio button, then press back. Now equation 1 has been configured and enabled. This diagram depicts what has been created. The analog input channel 3 has been configured to receive a 0 to 5 volt temperature signal from the RTD temperature probe. This signal value has been assigned to the input signal of the PID controller 1 using equation 1. The next step is to set up and configure the PID controller internal settings. To navigate to the PID Controller 1 setup screen, press the PID setup from the main menu. Press the PID 1 setup. This brings us to the PID Controller 1 setup main screen. 
as this controller shall be used in direct acting mode, ensure that the corresponding radio button is set. In this scenario, this controller's input signal shall be divided up into four different input zones. Each one of these zones can have its own set of unique PID gain constants. Input zones enable much better overall performance of the controller. To edit any PID gain constant, simply press the corresponding edit button, erase the default value, and enter the desired value. Larger values for proportional gain constants have a larger effect on controller output, whereas smaller values for integral or derivative gain constants have larger effects on controller output. For this scenario, the following PID control gain constants have been entered. To go back, simply press the back button. In this scenario, we shall configure this controller to execute once every second by pressing the corresponding radio button. So far, PID controller 1 has been configured with four input zones. Each input zone has its own proportional integral and derivative gain constants. The next step is to connect the PID controller's output signal to analog output 1 and analog output 2, which drive the hot control valve and the cold control valve respectively. To do this, we need to derive equations to ramp open and close each valve individually. Each of these equations shall be executed by the controller with use of if statements. This graph was shown earlier. On the x-axis, it shows the output of the PID controller from 0 to 100%, with the y-axis showing the position of the respective hot and cold control valves. In the top left, two tables have been created showing the controller output versus the respective position of the hot and control, cold control valves. To do this, select the Insert tab, go to the Chart field, and select a drop-down X and Y scatter graph. Now to add the points for the cold valve and the hot valve, follow these steps. Now to add the legend on the side, and now we have our graph. The next step is to add a trend line for both the hot and cold graphs. Make sure linear trend line is selected and check the display equation on chart. And now we do the same thing with the hot fluid valve. Now we have our two equations for the cold control valve and the hot control valve. From here we need to create an if statement that has a conditional expression so that when the controller output is below 50%, only the control valve equation is executed. When the controller's output is above 50%, only the hot fluid valve equation is executed. This diagram visually depicts what we shall be setting up internally of the AP100 controller. An if statement shall be used with a conditional expression PID controller output signal less than 
If this expression is evaluated to be true, then the Cold's fluid control valve equation shall be executed. If the if exp expression is evaluated to be false, then the hot fluid control valve equation shall be executed. To set up an if statement, press the expressions icon from the main menu. Press if statements one setup. Now we can see a blank if one statement ready for configuring. Press the edit button at the top right to enter the expression as shown earlier. Now we shall enter the first valve equation. When an equation has been entered, enable that equation by pressing the corresponding enable radio button. Enter the rest of the equations as shown here. Be sure to enable each individual equation with its respective enabled radio button. The next step now is to enable the this overall if statement one. This is done by selecting the drop down menu and selecting the respective enable radio button. As can be seen, when an if section or else section becomes active, its respective fields turn green. The final step is to configure the analog output channels one and two for the hot valve and cold control valves respectively. Each of these output channels can be either an analog voltage output or an analog milliamp output. To navigate to the analog output setup screens, press the settings icon on the main menu, then press output channel setup, then press the corresponding setup button for channel one. Press the zero to 24 milliamp radio button to change the output to current, then change the upper and lower max ranges to 20 and 4 milliamps respectively. Now change the description text. We shall now do the same thing for analog output channel two. This concludes this case study. For more information, please visit www.hazeltontechnologies.com and thank you for watching.